Hello class, today we'll be going over chapter 2, section 1. This section covers the tangent line problem, derivatives of a function, and differentiability and continuity. Starting with the tangent line, what is a tangent line? When you say that a line is tangent to a function f at point p, it means that the tangent line touches function f at point p, and that it has the same slope as f at point p. As you see in the examples, a tangent line may or may not intersect the function f at multiple points. So our challenge is finding the tangent line Tangent lines are always straight lines, so to find one's function, we can use the point-slope formula. This presents a problem, though, because although we know at point P for the tangent line, we don't know the slope if the function f is a curve. What we'll do for now is approximate the tangent line using a secant line instead. We'll have the secant line pass through the point of tangency, point P, and the second point on the function f. This way, having two points, we can use the, form, the slope formula to find the secant line's slope. If we make the first point c, f of c, then the second point will be c plus delta x, f of c plus delta y. But since f of c plus delta y equals f of c plus delta x, we'll just call the point c plus delta x f of c plus delta x. We substitute the point's coordinates into the slope formula and simplify. Now we have the secant line's slope. But if we reduce the distance between the secant line's points on function f, the secant line approximates the tangent line more and more. In fact, if we reduce the distance to zero, thus reducing delta x to zero, then the secant line becomes the tangent line. However, if we try using the slope formula that we got from the secant line with a delta x of zero, we get a zero in the denominator. That means that we'll just have to change the formula into the limit of the secant line's slope formula as delta x approaches zero. And voila! We have a slope formula for the tangent line. Now we can find m and use the point-slope formula from before. Let's try an example to go over. We have the function f of x, which equals x squared minus 2. We're going to find the tangent line to this function at point 2, 2. We have the point-slope formula, but although we have a point, we still need the slope. We use the slope formula and substitute f of c and delta x and f of c. We expand the squared quantity c plus delta x and apply the product rule to the quantity c squared minus 2. The resulting c squared and 2's cancel out here, 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 and here. The remaining numbers can all be divided by delta x, and so we get rid of the denominator. Now that we're not facing a situation with a zero for a denominator, we can substitute delta x with a zero to deal with the limit aspect of the equation. We can also afford to substitute c for 2 according to the point of tangency to 2. And we find that the slope m equals 4. Now we can use the point-slope formula. We substitute x sub 1 and y sub 1 with the point of tangency's coordinates. And we substitute m with 4 as we found with the slope formula. We now have the tangent line's function, which as you can see in later steps, I've taken the liberty to simplify. Now that we know how to find the tangent line of a function, we move on to a crucial point in calculus, the derivative of a function. The derivative of a function is determined with the following formula. As you can see, it is almost identical to the slope formula from before. The derivative formula does, however, have a crucial difference in that the function deals with a variable instead of a constant c. 
This means that the derivative of a function can yield another function instead of a constant like the slope formula does. In other words, for all x in which the limit exists, f prime is a function of x. Derivatives can be denoted by various notations, such as f prime of x, dy dx, y prime, d dx of f of x. Since the derivative formula is near identical to the slope formula, it is used in the same way. The difference is that with the derivative formula, the result is in terms of x, while in the slope formula, c is substituted by a constant. Despite the difference, we can use the derivative formula just like the slope formula to find the slope of a function. Once the function is derived, like f of x has been derived into f prime of x here, we substitute x just as we would see in the slope formula for the x value of the point in the function for which we are finding the tangent line slope. As you can see, we just did what we did before with the slope formula, but we did it by thinking of it in a different way. We took f of x, we derived it into another function f prime of x, and then substituted x for the x-coordinate of the point we were trying to work with. An alternate formula to find a function's derivative is the following. The previous formula used delta x in the denominator, which denotes the non-negative horizontal distance between the secant line's two points. This new formula is different from the previous because it allows the denominator to be negative depending on how x approaches c using one-sided limits, like these. As we can see here, a lesser x can approach a constant c by increasing in value. And here, a greater x can approach a constant c by decreasing in value. In other words, with one-sided limits, x can approach c from the right or from the left from the left and from the right. With these one-sided limits, we can determine whether a function is differentiable, meaning that we can determine whether it can be derived. If the limits as x approaches c are the same from the right as from the left, then f is differentiable at x equals c. It follows that a close interval a, b is differentiable if all of the points on the open interval a, b are differentiable, and if the derivative from the right at A and the derivative from the left at B both exist. Also, for F to be differentiable at X equals any constant C, F must be continuous when X equals C. Remember, any function F is not continuous when X equals C if the limit of F as X approaches C is not the same from both sides as you can see in these graphs. Here we have four graphs which we will use to discuss continuity and differentiability. This first graph, for example, is both differentiable and continuous. It's continuous because the function's value as x approaches all of the values c between a and b are the same from both sides. It is differentiable because the function's derivative are the same as x approaches all of the values c between a and b from both sides. The same goes for this function here. Allow me to explain further. If we were to pick any point c within the interval a, b in this function, c's value would be the same coming from the left as coming from the right. Not only that, but the slope would be the same coming from the left as from the right meaning that the derivative is the same coming from the left and from the right. The same, however, does not apply to the upper right-hand graph. In the interval a, b, the graph is not continuous because, as you can see in this particular point c, the value is not the same coming in from the left as coming in from the right. Hence, the graph is not continuous, and therefore it is also not differentiable. Now the lower left-hand corner graph is a bit trickier. 
it is continuous in the interval A to B because as you can see all the points C between A and B have the same value coming in from the left as from the right. However, it is not differentiable in the interval A to B because as you can see at this particular point the slope is not the same coming in from the left as coming from the right. Let me explain. If I were to draw a tangent line coming in from the left, it would look like this. However, if I were to draw it coming from the right, it would not be the same. This means that it does not have the same slope, it does not have the same derivative coming from both sides. Therefore, the graph is not differentiable in the interval AB.